Exactly. Joining us now with his outlook for the real estate sector is Rudin Management CEO Bill Rudin. The company is one of the largest private real estate companies in New York, in New York City. 32 properties totaling nearly 16 million square feet. It's good to have you back on, Bill. Good morning. So should the Fed be worried about commercial real estate? No question they should be worried. There's about a trillion and a half dollars of debt coming due in the next couple of years. And with the higher interest rates, uh, refinancing these loans are going to be problematic. But with the recent drop in rates in the last couple of days, hopefully that's uh, a sign that rates will start coming down. But there's definitely, uh, you know, significant headwinds uh, in the marketplace. But again, it depends on what sector. Residential, multifamily, still doing relatively strong. Commercial, the B-class buildings have huge issues. The A buildings are doing very well, particularly in New York City. Um, I think there was nearly 30 deals done uh, this year, above uh, $150 a foot in terms of rents, uh, and some even higher, uh, you know, hitting $200. But the older buildings, not amenitized, are the areas where uh, we're going to see problems. That's why we need conversions happening. Uh, the president announced a few weeks ago uh, significant uh, potential funding where transit-oriented conversions and in New York City, there aren't too many buildings that aren't too far away from a, a mass transit uh, system. So that's, opti that's an optimistic uh, sign for the future. We need the city and the state up in Albany to pass legislation to allow conversions to happen. We're doing a conversion with Larry Silverstein and Metro Lofts just two blocks from here on 55 Broad Street, 600 apartments in a 400,000 office, uh, was an office building, Goldman Sachs, Drexel Burnham. So it can happen. It can happen, but... The it, bathrooms aren't in the wrong place. No, well, you have to, you have to it's, it's not easy, but yeah. you have to spend a lot of money and, uh, and, you know, put the amenities in for the younger demographics, which is where this market is. And uh, so, but we need banks to start lending again. We need rates to start coming down. I uh, just saw this morning Invesco is going to put in $5 billion dollars in terms of uh, lending, sort of stepping in for where the banks uh, are restricted today, uh, very hard to get a construction loan. Are, are there uh, metropolitan areas in this country that you consider true canaries to some of the issues you think we might face in the next couple of years? Well, I, you know, it, it depends, on, you know, in each reg region. I really fo we really focus on New York right. City. And uh, New York City, like yesterday, we were just talking before, the, uh, the marathon We've been the longest contiguous sponsor of that race, 47 uh, years since it went five boroughs, and it was a great day. My granddaughter handed out the, the trophy. We watched all of our friends and our employees and the 50,000 runners and the millions of spectators. So urban areas are strong. People want to be in cities, uh, but we have to deal with the migrant issue. We have to deal with crime. Crime's coming down. You and I talk about crime all the time mm -hmm. in New York City. Uh, so there are a lot of issues that get, we have to deal with, but we're seeing a tremendous influx of people renting our apartments, wanting to be in the city. Uh, 25 apartments uh, above $4 million sold last week. Uh, Olshan report came out. So there's definitely activity, even with the high interest rates. You, I saw before you were talking about r rates coming down. So ho hopefully rates will start coming down and lending will start happening again and get some liquidity back in the market.